In my experience training the PMP exam, I have come across three bands of PMP exam students. I categorize these on a continuum as follows. The optimistic estimate type student. These are those who know the PMBOK already. They're fast learners. They've taken MCQs in the past. They've been to Prometric and Pearson. They know what those professional exams are like. And they are very pragmatic and often academic. And they can get loads of information really quick and whittle it down and understand it and just do amazingly well. I am not one of those students, I can tell you that. Then we have the pessimistic estimate type students where I fall into. These folks are usually totally new to the PMBOK. They use their own project management approach. They're slow learners. They've not taken Pearson or PMI type exams or other professional exams. They're not very skilled in converting abstract knowledge into actions. They read very slow just like me, and they need more time than their peers to master content satisfactorily. Also in this category, I have had students that have had medical conditions preventing long sitting or long studying, so they cannot study for long periods of time. And then I have the most likely estimate type student. They may use some elements of the PMBOK guide, but nothing that fancy. They're usually average learners, usually in the middle, but they're not slow. And typically, it takes them an average amount of time to read and cover content. They've got a little bit of project management training, but nothing PMBOK guide or PMI based. And those are my personas that I'm thinking about in this presentation. How much time am I likely to spend studying for the PMP exam? How much time are you likely to spend it's a question everybody asks, but it differs based on the individual. However, I've been getting quite a few questions, so I decided to give you a guide to estimate how much time you could take studying for the exam and how much time on average, based on my experience, training thousands of students, you may take in studying for the exam. Remember, this is not the holy grail. It's just a guide. So always give extra time for the unexpected. So my estimates are based on scattering the chapters of the PMBOK guide based on the effort needed to study those chapters. So from the most difficult all the way down. And these estimates also include the time spent going for a live course or an online course, time spent reading, time spent taking quizzes, and all that. So I put mock exams First, to call out the importance of mock exams. People take mock exams to get better in their studying. Some people do not intentionally do this, but this is definitely one thing to call out. And also, studying the code of ethics. So I have bunched these together and put these first, and I believe that these take a significant effort when you bunch them together. Time spent taking mock exams, lots of mock exams, and time spent studying the code of ethics. And I've just grouped them for convenience. But here you can see I have also time, cost, and risk as being the highest bars, showing you that these take a significant amount of effort compared to other chapters where most students are concerned. For some students, it might be the HR chapter that is a nightmare to them. It really depends on the individual. So what I'm showing you is the line of best fit based on my experience training and coaching students. I have broken down estimates for each chapter into an optimistic estimate, a most likely estimate, and a pessimistic estimate. When I say optimistic estimate, this is the best case scenario based on a student that currently practices PMI's standards, such as the PMBOK guide and other associated standards in risk, schedule, work breakdown structure, and so on. The most likely is based on a student that does not have any fancy experience practicing the PMI's dogma as documented in the PMBOK guide, but does have some experience using the basic tools of project management, like Gantt charts, WBSs, things that do not require any special PMI-isms. And lastly, the pessimistic is a project manager that is so far removed from structured project management 
though they may have been managing projects using their own personal approaches or semi-common approaches, so to speak. So for each of these chapters, you can see time management. Pessimistic estimate looks at 24 hours studying time management, going through the material, reading the PMBOK guide, reading your study guide, using flashcards, answering questions, doing exercises, speaking to the instructor about it, being in a live course, so on and so forth. 24 hours for time. The same for cost and risk. On the very best side, taking an optimistic view, 12 hours, and this is studying, going for classes, answering questions, so on and so forth. To you, that might look like a lot of time, but just ask anyone who is PMP certified and they'll tell you, it could take a significant amount of time to study time management, soon to be called schedule management. Okay, so as you look at this, think about it. Where do you lie based on what you've seen so far? Some of you are new to this. I would put myself in the line of best fit, the most likely line down here. And you can expect to spend 16 hours on time, 16 hours on cost. And I'm talking about two full days in that if you look at 16 hours and think about an eight hour day, work day, then you're likely to spend two days going to work, doing nothing but studying time, cost, and risk. So very quickly, these days add up. Now, no one sits down for a straight two days at work, at least most people don't, studying for the PMP exam. So the takeaway is, overall, how many hours do I look at spending? Pessimistic estimate says, 264 hours. Optimistic estimate says 100 hours. Most likely somewhere in the middle, 146. Again, this is based on my experience of training and coaching students, both in live scenarios and students who use our learning management system that has 35 contact hours of training and lots of exams. So if we take a look at the final numbers here, let me zoom in on this. On the pessimistic band, those 264 hours equate to seven work weeks. And I'm talking about working nonstop on nothing but PMP exam studying. Optimistic estimate looks at two and a half work weeks. This is like you showing up for work and doing nothing but studying. Now that's not doable. So how can I help you pinpoint the amount of time to put in? In this next tab, you can see that I've broken out the hours, the optimistic, the most likely, and the pessimistic hours into, again, the knowledge areas. But then I lump them up here with the assumption that you're spending two hours a day at least studying and focusing on moving these hours, on burning them down. You need to look at this like a burn down chart that you need to burn down as you proceed. So if you're burning down at a velocity of two hours a day, you're putting in two hours a day. So you can gauge where you are. Some students say, Phil, I know I'm in the optimistic band. I use PMBOK guide at work. I've been for a master's degree in this, so on and so forth. But some students, if you're like me, and you read very slow, you learn differently, you learn in your own unique way, I would go for the pessimistic band. Again, as you begin to study, you'll realize if you're getting this done quicker than Phil said. So you'll be able to put yourself in the right band, maybe more towards most likely, or maybe in the optimistic band. I have had a student, now this is an anomaly, don't try this at home, but I had a student, Parmeet, who started studying on our LMS on a Thursday night. He studied average of 12 hours a day, studied on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 12 times four is 48, roughly. 
On some days, he may have studied a little bit more than 12 hours, but 12 hours on the whole. He got done and took the exam on Monday and passed the exam, studying round about 50 to 60 hours. Now, that is very rare. That is definitely an outlier. That doesn't happen very often. So, typically, we find on the very, very good end, 100 hours, and this is time spent studying on the learning system, reading books, and so on, or 264. Now, if you convert this into days by studying for two hours a day, if you're on the pessimistic end, you're looking at 132 days. And I'm talking about continuous days, no weekend breaks. So if you divide 132 by 30, you come up with roughly four months plus on the pessimistic end. And I'm talking about constantly studying. If you are not constantly studying, then you're not even going to be able to make these four months plus. And I'm talking about on the pessimistic end. So on the pessimistic end, if you're studying relentlessly, then you're looking at four months plus. Okay? So I'll put this here for you to remember. Four months plus. Four months plus some. On the most likely end, if you study two hours daily, you should be done in 73 days, and this is roughly two months plus. And on the optimistic end, if you study two hours daily relentlessly, without breaks, remember, no weekends, you're going from Monday to Sunday, putting in your solid two hours, moving 14 hours a week. You're going to be done in 50 days, which equates to go into about one and a half month. So we can say roughly 1.5, or should I say 1.6 month. So folks, there you have it. Based on historical information and observations, in my experience, if you're planning to get certified, if you've got a whole lot of time, it might take shorter than this, but if you put in an average of two hours a day, this is what you can expect. And I'm talking about two hours of peak performance where you are wide awake, in the zone, and focused. Because trust me, if you're not in the zone, a chapter that could take you six hours may end up taking you 12 hours because you're not in the zone. I've had to go back and study again and again because what I studied at first didn't stick. Or I studied in a noisy environment or on a plane or in the office, which was busy. So you want to put in your peak time, peak performance at your peak time. If you study best in the morning, study in the morning. If you study best at night, study at night. Wake up, do it. These days I've been having these boot camps, study boot camps for my friends on YouTube. And I call it Savage on Saturdays because we got to wake up early. Those on the East Coast got to wake up around six. I have to wake up around five or four, sometimes even three to put these meetings together. No pain, no gain. You got to do it. So if you really want to get certified, don't let this scare you. You can absolutely put in the time, put in the effort, put in the focus Get those hours moving. Burn them down. And this is really to help you plan, not to freak you out. It's to help you plan. So plan. How am I going to move these hours? If you're like me and you were hitting the library and you were putting in eight hours on the weekend, you might get this done a lot quicker. Now, part of my reason for not taking the exam soon enough was I was on the sidelines thinking, oh, am I ready? Am I really sure? Oh, I don't feel I'm ready. And I would make excuses. And I didn't go for a live training course. I didn't have a live coach from a training course telling me about what the latest and greatest was in terms of difficulty or telling me, go do it. 
Sometimes you just need that kick to say, go do it. I've had a lot of students on YouTube say, Phil, your videos motivated me to go do it. So I went and did it and I'm certified. Your videos motivated me to get it done on the 5th. That's what I'm talking about. So this is not to scare you. It's really just to help you pace yourself. So if you know that you need to do this in one month, what do you need to do? If you need to do this in one month, well, you need to think about where you stand. If you're on the pessimistic band and you need to get this done in a month, it means that you need to haul these hours quicker. So you need to put in 264 hours within a month. How are you going to do that? Well, it means that you need to be putting in roughly 50 hours a week. How can you do that? How can I put in 50 hours a week? Maybe it's not realistic then, you see. Or if you're doing nothing but studying for eight hours a day, then it is possible. And on the weekends, you amp it up even more. So you need to ask yourself, how soon do I need to do this? How realistic is what I'm looking at? Where do I stand? Just think about my analogy. Do you have experience in the PMBOK guide? Do you use it at work? Have you gone for prior studying? It's all about you being comfortable in the optimistic band. If you feel, wow, I have no clue about the PMI stuff, I studied Prince 2, or I'm coming from the world of Agile, then maybe you need to give yourself a little bit more time, all right? If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to type them in that chat box below. I will respond to all of your comments or questions. And I will be curious to know, those of you who are PMPs, how much time did you spend studying? Give a rough estimate and put the duration and the effort. You know, duration is the passage of time, months, weeks, days, but the effort, number of hours. Very curious to know what your approximations are based on your experience. Thank you and bye for now.